Okay, so um, I apologies first because I should have done a little uh, video for you guys this morning, but it was the last day and we were in a bit of a rush to get to the convent, so I couldn't do the morning one, but just to say it was a massive day. We did loads on the organ, it all went really well. We got in the front set of pipes, we kind of put them in place as a bit of a tester, um, just to make it, um, one, it kind of spurs us on for next week, but we just had to check that everything was still upright. So um, really good, Michael and I have done, done good. We've had a really big week, so very happy with progress. We are now on the road, on the way back to the Moon household, so not long. And I'll be home. So love to you guys. See you soon. Take care. Hello everybody. Well, it's day five. Daddy is on his way home soon. Not right now, but soon. He, I know he's putting the bellows in at the moment in the bottom of the organ, but yeah, he'll be on his way home this afternoon. And oh, we are so excited to see him. It's gonna be a whistle stop though. He's back, he's home tonight. He's home Saturday for the day. He's home Sunday for the morning. Then he's back off up to the Pepherics to to his, to his the organ to start work, carry on working on the organ. So next week it should really start to pick up pace and we should see a real difference. I mean, there's an amazing difference already and Billy's filming. God, it brings a lump to your throat. It's incredible. So watching Nick do that has just been like, you know, it's been so lovely. Every evening at 7.30, we've sat here and we've watched it. And, you know, I felt off some, some bursting with pride. I'm just so proud of him to, to have taken on such a monumental task. And, you know, what I couldn't have asked for a better partner, could he and Michael? You know, the, the pair of them together are just bouncing off each other and doing such a magical job. I mean, it is incredible. What a job to be able to do. And, you know, what a perfect pairing. The pair of them have just you know, blown me away. Just absolutely incredible. But anyway, so today I have a um, a very busy day ahead of me. I've done the horses. I did them early, got them all out and breakfasted and mucked out and ready to go because I'm going to obviously, you know, got to do the usual, tidying up the house. Four kids living here. It doesn't stay tidy. So give the house a quick spruce. And obviously we've got our very important person coming this evening. We have a visitor arriving. So I'm going to go and get the guest bedroom ready and turn the heating on and get that all done. So it's all nice and cosy for them. Um, they're equally, what a special thing. They're coming all the way here um, because they want to help with the horses. They want to help do the website and they want to take some professional photos and lots of different things to really help push the charity forward. So it's another person that we can add to the list of people that are getting involved. So yeah, it's really every time someone does and every time someone does that's got, you know, a following or has, you know, has people behind them, it's obviously giving the horses a louder voice. So this is, you know, truly amazing. So can't wait for this person to arrive. You'll see them this evening. Um, I bet you'll be surprised. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really touching, really touching that this is, this is happening. And yeah, you know, I can't, we, we honestly as a family can't thank everyone enough because we've been doing this for sort of 15 years on our own, like, trudging away. I was like, at some point this is going to break, at some point this is going to happen. And, and it, you know, it looks like it's happening. So with the Channel 4 thing coming out next year and everything else that's been going on, well, it's just amazing, just absolutely amazing. So I feel really, really privileged and very humbled that this is happening to us for those horses and that's what it's for it's all about the horses so so yeah we'll keep trudging on and keep going and eventually they'll be heard and yeah and, and good things can ha can happen so i'm going to go and get this room done now and oscar's asleep at the moment but he's due to wait any moment now so he'll be with me so i'm going to go and get the the bedroom all ready and then start looking at doing a really lovely dinner for everyone this evening and um yeah just looking forward to our daddy moon to come home so we'll see you very soon morning everybody so we have got a magpie a mischievous magpie that keeps tapping on the chimney in the barn lounge i'm going to go and see if i can capture it every time i do this it flies away so close this magpie has been banging on the chimney of the house for about the last six months every day it comes down and it starts banging on the metal chimney and it's like drums and it sits up there and then it flies down to the window and it taps on the window like crazy. I have tried to set my phone up, but my phone will only sort of go for about five minutes and then it turns itself off. So yeah, so we've got to try and catch it somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's amazing. It just sits up there banging like a drum for a good half an hour. It wakes the kids up if on a Saturday. <laughs> only we could have a mischievous magpie. So it's nice and drizzly again. <laughs> 
But Daddy Moon is due home this evening, so we are all really looking forward to that with his special guest. I wonder who that is, f man, hey? Are you going to meet someone special? I think you are. So I'm going to give these guys breakfast now. I think they're going to have a duvet day, um, given the drizzle. So, yeah, I'm going to give them all nice breakfast, and then I'm going to get on with today's jobs. Hello everybody, unfortunately we have a poorly legend so I've just put a little update out on YouTube for you to say there won't be a video which will be last night because obviously now it's tonight so but last night you wouldn't have seen it so this is today, it gets so confusing but yeah he's very very poorly, um, my amazing children Toby and Charlie are outside with him now, the vet's on standby, we're used to this with old horses, this happens a lot, it's called colic um, but it is a really nasty illness that can go one of two ways. They can either be okay or it could potentially kill them. So it's a really, really nasty thing that we deal with quite a lot with the old horses. But unfortunately this horse, um, it is Cantho Z. He actually hasn't had colic with us before, so this is really out of the blue for him. Normally it's caused by a diet change or some sort of change in their, um, you know, what their routine. And nothing's changed, he does the same every day, so nothing's changed. So that's more, that's more of a worry that he's just come out of nowhere. So we're not entirely sure why he is colicking, but he is. What we need him to do is go to the toilet. So it's almost, um, you get two or three different, there's lots of different types, I'm not going to go into it now, but there are all sorts of different colics, but this particular one is he is constipated basically and he cannot go to the toilet, so he's blown up like a balloon, he's got a really big tummy, um, you can hear all the gases in his belly, they're all popping and making lots of noise, but he just can't go to the toilet, so he's sort of rubbing himself up against the wall and he's getting himself really stressed and he's got all sweaty and worried and you know we actually can't do anything without a vet so unfortunately the vets are all pretty tied up at the moment but they are on call and they are they do know but having handled this quite a lot before we've decided with the vet to just keep walking him so if we keep walking him we're going to keep his tummy moving we're going to keep everything going so we're going to keep walking him it's dark Nick's on his way home, I'm trying to put Oscar to bed, um, so it's all a little bit crazy at the moment, but thank goodness for my eldest sons, because they are out there right now, and for the last two hours, they've been walking him round and round in, around the house, and trying to get his gut moving. Really good news, he's had a poo, I'm sitting in the tack room, it's a bit warmer in here, and uh, yeah, this is where we're going to spend the, be spending our, our Friday night, like you do, so uh, yeah, um, he, he's happy, oh, he's gone, he, he, was, he was really fat before, um, he's gone back to normal again, and he he looks happy. He he's walking winningly. Uh, you don't have to uh try and pull him. Um, he uh he's not sweating anymore. He's a lot. He, he's a lot, he's calmed down a lot. So he's happy. And now we're walking him up and down the drive, instead of around the house. So he's got a bit bit of a longer walk, and it it's on hard ground. Around the house is on grass. So uh, it it's just a bit more um, a bit more, well, it's just better for him. So uh, yeah, thank you for uh. 
staying with us and uh, we'll keep you updated. Oh, the relief. Oh, he's had a poo. So, yeah, we just need to now just, we're going to keep walking him. Daddy's not far away. We're just going to keep walking him and, uh, yeah, fingers crossed because he is a poorly boy right now. But, yeah, he's had a poo and, um, yeah, things are looking good. <laughs> Who'd have been so excited about poo? Oh, I'm not very good at this. This bit I'm not very good at. Daddy's really good at this and he wasn't here, but he's on his way. We're going to breathe through it. The kids are doing a great job and uh, yeah, I'm going to go out now. Hello everybody, I'm out here with Toby with this babysitting camp though. He's quite sick. We've walked him around the house. He is, he's getting better. He's had a nice poo and a fart, and we, we'd do anything for them. They are, they've done so much for us, and we just, we'd do anything. So we're out here, and we're going to stay out here for a bit of the night, and just keep you updated. So, um, thank you everyone, firstly, for all your lovely comments and your support. It's, it's kind of got us through the night. We are here. The sun is shining and Kentho is happy and well and he's eating his hot brown mash which Mummy Moon has lovingly made him. We are just ultimately relieved that uh, it all turned out well. So like we said, during the night we've been checking in, we've been um, yeah, watching his progress and he's got better and better and he's back in the game. So it's a good day at the office. Um, obviously I'm back home with the family which is fantastic. And our little secret guest who is standing behind the camera at the moment um, is with us for, for this couple of days. So um, I'll introduce you later. Okay, everyone, this is the introduction to my very special guest. I'm sure you know him, but if you don't, this is Ryan, of, well, probably Billy's best friend in the whole wide world ever. And um, I've befriended him and I've kidnapped him from up at the Petherix and I've brought him down to help us do lots of stuff. What he's going to do, he's very kindly agreed to help us do the website. He's going to do some lovely shots and get the feel for that. He's also going to help us with stuff we do on YouTube. And Billy and Sadie very kindly gave us a lovely new phone because Mama Moon's phone, you can't see it, but it's bent like a banana and the screen that she's filming on is completely smashed. So um, we've got a new phone. We've got some expert help and it's going to be good. So um, thank you, Ryan, for coming and uh, welcome to the Madhouse. Thank you for having me. Very exciting times. Uh, yeah, I'm having a blast sort of uh, having a deep dive into what you're doing here and, and, and you know, seeing the, the moons in their natural habitat. Yeah, that's and, it. And <laughs> uh, I'm just, yeah, just <clears throat> loving life. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do some good. Do some good in the world, hopefully. And I think the the best bit is with the help trying to push the legacy of legends forward is Ryan's going to be invaluable because he's got that technical expertise, he's got the experience, and just that edge we need to get it all across to as many people as we can. So, oh, thanks, mate. No pressure. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Let's do it. Exciting time. So we're at the end of the day as you can probably tell because it's getting dark and Ryan is doing his first ever putting a halter or a head collar in uh, English um, on Epilan and he's going to lead him in. So uh, Cyrus, you're up for the task? Yeah, I'm up for it. I mean, what can go wrong? Okay, so what you've got to do is get the nose through there like that and then you've got to just put that behind the ears and do it up. So nose in there, yeah, and then that goes over the years. top of the head behind the ears. So yeah? Nose through here. But he's an old pro, so he's going to help you with this process. Yeah. So I'm just going to get him out of the mud, and Ryan's going to do the manoeuvre. Just like that. Epilan's a good teacher. Don't run off. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Right, okay, so, yeah. hold on, that's it. Yeah. Nose in there. Oh, look, you've done this before, haven't you? Flip that over the ears. Like that. Do He's a natural. Chef up. Wow. That's it. There you go. Yeah. 
then tuck that in just while you should put it through there. But as oh, we're right. only going to the stables, that's yeah. good. Okay. And then what you want to do is leading the horse. Yeah. So stand here. So what you want is if you're holding them there and you've got your arm there, you can feel where they're at, but they're not going to stand on the back of your leg. When you <laughs> see, if you've okay. got your if you've got your arm there, yeah. Yeah. if he goes to go forward, you can feel where he is with your neck. Yeah. Right. Just like that. Like this. Yeah, and then just go. lead him. Yeah, there you go. This is actually Bonnie Wow. You got a little, you got a little accomplice there. Straight in there. Wow. We're in. We're in. No, we do the whole blue section. Okay, so to take it off, yeah. Demontage. Boom. There we go. There we go. Okay. Well done. So, Thank you very much, Okay, um, you can. <clears throat> so, really, what just happened there was a moment in history. Ryan sorted Epelan out, brought him in, and he has now, the legend that is Epelan de Fouque, done the business. Wow. Just like that. I can't believe it, <laughs> to be honest. You're what a majestic boy. creature. And you know, it's not until you're up close and personal that you, you realise, first of all, how big they are, mm -hmm. but how sort of smart and and sort of switched on, savvy, yeah. they are. Do you know what I mean? They're so yeah. aware of their surroundings. They know what's going on. And I, I, I was leading the horse, but, you know, he knows where he's going. He knows. He knows the score. He knows, well, the, he score. knows the scores on the doors. Look yeah. who's up there, look. <laughs> Who's that rhubarb or custard or someone? Who? Both of them. You like Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> Who's that there? Right, come on then. Yeah, I'm not going to stay here all night. I'm going to get out though.